I'm Kat. I'm Martin13. Welcome to our show, World Tiger. Building Dragon. Today we are doing another one of World Anvil's summer camp prompts. Summer camp is a program set up by the World Anvil team to promote world building as well as the community in general. There'll be a total of 33 prompts all throughout the month of July, so if you're looking to win some prizes for your submissions, don't miss out. World Anvil is a free in-browser tool that has everything that a world builder, a GM, or a writer may ever need. They also have some really incredible subscription options, so make sure to check those out as well. Totally worth it and affordable. If you're interested, please consider checking them out. But in any case, Kat, let's get down to this prompt. What is our prompt? Today we get to write about a condition or a disease that recently got a cure. Hmm. How do you feel about this one? I don't initial know. Thoughts. I mean, I don't have any like initial thoughts, but I I'm excited to do it. It's just a little strange to think of like what is something that could have affected the world but now no longer affects the world. I struggle with thinking of like oh, that's in the past. Without well, how does it, what are the repercussions in the future? Right, right. Sure, sure, sure. My curiosity is not necessarily a concern. I'm just very interested about, uh, I've never used, and I very infrequently used the condition article type mm -hmm. in World Anvil. Mm -hmm. So this ought to be interesting. I'm excited. For you guys at home who are unaware of what Kat and I have been doing for the past month, A, where have you been? B, we have given <laughs> ourselves some parameters in order to complete the summer camp project. Each of us has 30 minutes to answer the prompt. Each of our submissions have to be at minimum 300 words. After the 300 words and our 30 minutes are up, the two of us will come back together and share what we came up with. Some of our best ideas have come from our collaborations. That they have. Ready for this? Yes. Let's do Time it. skip! And we're back. We're back. How did you feel? I actually really liked what I came up with. Um, it was, I enjoy using the conditions page. I don't get to use it as much as I maybe want to in the future. Um, but I don't know, I had a lot of fun with this one. What about you? I had, I had some fun. Um, I think I kind of just, uh, when I was thinking about it initially, I went into kind of a George R. R. Martin kind of headspace and was thinking to myself, I need to take a disease that already exists or something similar to a disease that already exists and put that into mm -hmm. Elecrid in some way, shape, or form. There you go. Uh, so that's kind of where I went with on this one. Well, do you want to start? Sure, because I'm almost positive yours is going to be better. What? Anyway, <laughs> uh, so the disease that I came up with is called the Vermin Vex, and this is essentially a spin on rabies in a way. Um, but it takes a not necessarily a harsher approach, um, but there are a couple of other factors that divert it away simply from rabies. However, the transmission is mostly the same. Uh, the vermin vex is transmitted through um, bite mm -hmm. of an animal. Of an animal, a uh, feral animal, generally the most common things are rats. Uh, the places in which it, uh, or the causes and the vectors and transmission and so forth, is um, specifically in the Empire of Denison, which is a human-centric empire in Elacrid. Uh, there are areas of towns and cities that are just not well kept, well maintained, not well kept. Their cleanliness and hygiene is down the toilet, no pun intended. Um, but so they are privy to a lot of rats and vermin that just run rampant through the streets. And, you know, unsuspecting folk can get bit by these vermin, and if the wound is allowed to fester, they undergo a series of symptoms that uh, could potentially lead to very aggressive and, um, un... Oh, how do I put this delicately? Um, a very loud coughing death. Mm. Uh, essentially what happens is that when you are bit and you, the wound is allowed to fester, uh, your body temperature fluctuates rapidly and uh, it's not like doing one of these, it's one of these. Yeah. Um, you get really, really hot and then really, really cold and really, really hot, really, really cold. Um, and in the midst of you doing this, your body is literally eating itself, eating the muscle tissue to try to burn that energy and keep try to get you back to some homeostatic semblance of mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but once you have kind of exhausted all of your fluids because you will be sweating profusely and then getting really cold and then sweating profusely and getting really cold, um, once you've exhausted all of your fluids, your throat, your windpipes are so dry that you start hacking, you start coughing, and your coughs become so violent 
that it actually, like, ruptures your windpipes and you start bleeding from your mouth. Yeah. Um, until essentially you suffocate yourself from coughing so much. Uh, now, we had to talk about a cure. Mm -hmm. uh, the cure that I came up with, it doesn't necessarily have a name, however, it was developed by a Pandemic Prevention Bureau in the Empire of Denison. They do have that, but it's very small, small, scale. small scale, and their technology and medicine work is not to the degree that such places as the Elven Imperium is. Mm -hmm. um, we can only do so much, and, you know, relations aren't the best. <laughs> but the treatment is uh, it's a syrup that I actually got to um, add a few... Uh, Tyler talked about this at one point. Basically, you're able to do an at mention hmm. in the course of writing something, so it will automatically create that article for your mention, so it will link you to that article, but you have to obviously go back and write it write at some point. Article. Right. So what I came up with was there is a plant whose leaves are used to kind of grind into this paste and mixed in with this syrup that will, when ingested, it will coat the throat mm. and prevent, you will still probably cough, but it will help maintain lubrication so that you are able to essentially sweat this out. Right. Because uh, there's no really solid way, antibodies or otherwise, to deal with this. Um, besides, you know, penicillin made from right. mold and so on and so forth. But the main cure that they have for this is to stop the coughing fits, because the coughing fits are what kill you. Right. You can't breathe. But the infection isn't great either. Inve infections can still oh, yes. take you out. Oh, yes. Um, but they have their, you know, clean the wound. Yeah. <laughs> Please, for the love of God. <laughs> Just clean it out. Um, but really short and sweet on this mm -hmm. one. Uh, nothing too out there or too major. It is viral, I suppose, um, as opposed to a bacterial. Right. Uh, but initially I wanted it to be a bacterial, but it became viral just because of the, the bite and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a three-pronged situation, uh, but the, what they dealt with, the cure that they dealt with was really... Um, just making sure you making don't, sure cough, you yourself don't cough yourself to death. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like that. I like taking inspiration from something in real life and just being able to mold it into your world. And especially, I think it just adds another another layer. So if you're touring the Empire of Denison and you come across some people hacking and coughing really badly, it kind of adds that extra, like, stay away from that, mm -hmm. don't touch that. Oh, also, I apologize. Um because I, I recall there was something more and you just brought that up. Because uh, in order to, when you are bit and your wound begins to, and you like are in, in, infected with the vermin vex, um, you become patient zero. Mm. And when you start coughing, not only is that the potential for you to die, but that is also you transmitting the Ooh. virus because it becomes airborne. Uh, and flows through the air. That was something that I forgot to mention, and, I, and I'm yeah. happy you brought that up. But I also wanted to mention that I took a page out of your book, and while I was writing this, I had Fantasy Name Generator right next door to me, mm -hmm. and I'm just, okay, that that sounds awful, that sounds, okay, that's tolerable, that's okay. let's, fi yeah. Yeah, let's figure something else out. So Fantasy Name Generator was my friend. Good, here. but normally you can find some pretty good stuff in that, but yeah. is that's there all. anything else you had fun no, with? No, I, well... I mean, this was very interesting. Um, I tried my best not to be incredibly topical. Mm -hmm. um, for me, diseases, I always, uh, that's something that I never really think about when, I, when it comes to my settings. I always kind of think, okay, so the common cold, the flu probably exists, but at the same time, it's a fantasy setting. And in a game where I, what I normally use these settings for are games, mm -hmm. so having some sort of a disease that cure your disease. cure disease, yeah, it's just kind of negligible, uh, and plus a lot of players don't like to be told from across the table that hey, you have the flu and now you're vomiting. Right. Um, so <laughs> this was, man. yeah, this yeah. was very interesting. But I like the uh, idea in terms of world building, the fact that there is a part of the world that is still dealing with this and still suffering with this, and that is a potential avenue that the uh, players can be involved in in terms of helping people through this or. Burning it out. Yeah. <laughs> God. Um, What'd you get? So I 
actually got really into mine. I was writing and writing to the bell, and then it got to the very end, it was, you know, timer set. I was like, yes, I'm really positive about this, and I never gave it a name. So, um, it, it doesn't really have a name yet. I quickly went, like, same thing, went on Fantasy Name Generator. I was like, I don't know, I don't know, and so I think one of them was, like, the scaled heartache. I was like, perfect, easy peasy. Not I didn't get think. that. Not what <laughs> you think. Um, but, so after, um, going back, after Kidal, the country in which most of the, a lot of lizard folk, dragonborn, kobolds, it's, it's a very jungle, swampy, not, like, over, just filled with life area, um, after they were taken over by Sondominel, they were, and again, they keep showing up, because, <laughs> but they, um, after Sona Manel kind of receded their forces and were like, hey, sorry about that, here's a nice package deal and we'll just be heading on out, um, because they felt bad, uh, the <laughs> lizard and dragon folk, or a lot of the, um, a lot of those creatures began to notice a huge spike in infertile or unhatched eggs in their, in their country. Now, normally... Um, in this area of the world, it is known for being just vibrant, filled with life. Normally, like 90% of the eggs would hatch, have vast, you know, lots of kids running around. Um, they were losing upwards of 50 to 75% of their eggs after, and it was huge. Um, and people, they, um, there were rumors that it was caused by the, con the invading country to limit their numbers. There was lots of rumors going around. They couldn't figure out what it was. Um, it is... Um, we'll get to the, the uh, how it was fixed first, but in essence, there is a plant. It is... Let's back this up. Let's try to figure this out. Okay. <laughs> Pause. Pause. Back. There is a genetic dis it is a genetic condition that runs through lizard folk and dragonborn that causes them to have issues with um, laying eggs and keeping eggs. Um, however, um, it is genetic, male and female. Anyone could be a carrier for it. It's really hard to detect because you can't detect it until after you've already after the eggs are supposed to be hatched. Mm -hmm. um, However, there is a plant called a apesia, I think that's what it's called, apesia? Pysia. It's called a pysia. That was super popular in Kidal. It was like a, an onion type thing. A lot of people cooked with it. It was just an easy thing to grab um, in the lands of Kidal. After the Sonda Manelian forces invaded, they kind of saw that and they said, hey, why are you guys eating those wild onions? Why don't you start farming and cultivating your own food and here's how you can do that so the culture kind of shifted away from this wild plant um that actually suppressed that disease um and so all of a sudden now they're losing after losing that as a vital part of their diet they started having issues and so it was this like what is going on? Why is this disease happening? So it, they actually had to call in forces from Sundo Manel because they were ready to go to war and be like, you caused this on our country. We're losing, you know, vital people in our society. Um, but they found out that it's just, you need to have a healthy diet of these Pajas and you're all set. And you're all set? Yeah. So did they start, okay, so then it was a wild onion. Did it have to be a wild paija or could no, they it's, cultivate you them? No, you can cultivate them. It just so happened that a lot of the time, before the forces of Sundominal invaded a lot of these other countries, this country was very hunter-gather mm -hmm. and just, it was just, all, it, they're found everywhere. So it was just an easy grab-and-go okay. part of their daily diet um, situation. Um... I'm trying to go through and see if there are any other things that were... It was known as a great travesty in this area because Absolutely. the lands of Kidal are very treacherous. Um, and so every child born is like protected and cared for and like really necessary because most of them don't make it to their second birthdays just because 
there's a lot of dangers in the lands of Kidal, so like losing out on that vast amount of those vast amount of eggs was detrimental to their societies. Um, I was able to write down underneath cultural reception that after it is seen that you're kind of a victim of this disease, um, and maybe you don't have access to Pyja or whatever, um, there's, you're kind of surrounded with a great sadness and a lot of people kind of look down on those, not looking down on them, but it's they very, pity them. pity them, and it's yeah. very sad, you know, kind of like they can't provide for their society, so what a lot of, what, um, sometimes other mothers will offer runts or, you know, defected, I don't want to say defected, but like, children that are maybe not 100%, I don't know, and they'll offer them to these, um, to these other infertile, infertile families. families that can't, that can't, Sterile yeah, family that whatever. can't have, um, that, that can't have that many. Um, so I like that idea of, I don't know, that, that's a character I want to create. It's just some, you know, lizard folk or a dragonborn who has this disease and they kind of have a little army of other dragonborn lizard folk that are less than perfect. I have a really awesome idea for a narrative bit to put in there, mm -hmm. so I think we'll compare it, we'll talk yeah, later. Yeah, 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 we'll but talk yeah. talk about it later. Um, um, I really like that. It, <clears throat> I like the fact that you took a biological, like, it is genetic, it is a genetic imperfection or mm -hmm. abnorm abnormality in them, and gave them... And, and took that spin on it. Whereas mine was more or less just an infection, a virus, what have mm -hmm. you. Yours is something that they had to, like, go a little bit deeper than just mm -hmm. like, ah, stop coughing! Right, this was... And this... I really like that. I never considered right. doing that. And it went undetected just for so long because it was common to eat these pajas and just mm -hmm. eat them all the time. And then as soon as it became uncool, or that became like the poor people's food, they stopped eating them, and then that's when the realization of, oh no, there is a condition that is running rampant throughout the these scaled societies. Um, so it's called the scaled heart heartache? I am not set on that name whatsoever. I kind of like it. That might be a nickname. I think that might be a nick nickname. I would also see that as like the name of the event of the great infertility or yes. something like yeah, that, yeah, rather yeah. than I the like great that. infertility, right. you know, the scaled heart heartache or whatever. Yeah, um, but I need to come up with a better name as far as like what it would be called. Um, and I know yeah. so so we had mentioned we have brought up the name Kidal a number of times. Mm -hmm. That was the name of the dragon deity, but it mm -hmm. is also the name of the of country. Of the country. Yes. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. His stories are very very common in this in that in his country Sounds obviously like my kind of people he's pretty great and they're pretty great i like these i like them a lot um but yeah that was pretty much all i got as far as uh was there anything in particular that you really enjoyed delving into here um i really liked taking a different approach from it and it not being um not being what you would normally think Normally, you know, it would be because it just randomly popped up after these the force after the forces of Sundomanel left. You would think like they're out to get them. They're going to you mm -hmm. know they're trying oh, to lessen their forces. Um, when in reality, they were called back in, and they're like, no, we're you know, this is caused because it's not this food item is so vital to this culture. Um, not only because it provides nutrients, but also it, it's a main fighter against this condition. So... So I have a thought. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is not, this is just me not having enough understanding of genetic conditions to really be able to speak that. Is it perhaps, um... Do dragonborn, do reptilian races in Theatrum perhaps already just out the gate suffer from a deficiency in reproductive capability and this is more or less in it. and this the uh, the pyja is mm -hmm. more or less a accelerant yes okay yeah. so but which is why you know now some there are plenty of reptilian folk in the atrium that don't have this condition but this condition is very common okay um and so once they noticed that drop, it was that, like, wait, what is going on here mm -hmm. after not eating the food? 
Fair. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got. I really, I really like that. I like, I like yours. I like taking something because I, I did struggle at the beginning of this. Like, I don't know. So I, I'm. I had the idea that I wanted to take something and put it into Elegrid, mm -hmm. but then I also like I had to start with, and this is my, this is my issue all the time. I can't start writing if I don't know what it's called. And that throws me off so bad yeah. sometimes. So I had to get the name of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can only imagine what you yeah, do. Yeah, I have no idea what this is going to be. How end you up. do that? This is going to be uh, named something different, but I'm still loving it. So nice. that's all I got. That's all I got. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let us know in the comments below something you enjoyed about today's video, or if you have an idea that you're willing to share. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit all those buttons that everyone else bugs you about. We'd love for you to join our lunch table. And go check out World Anvil if you're interested. You guys have been great. I'm Kat. I'm Arden13. I'm still waiting on that ramen. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.